Hey everybody, so we are actually going to be now applying our trig ratio. So we're going to be using sine, cosine, and tangent for real life problems. Now for real life problems, we have two things that we're going to need. First is going to be the angle of elevation. So when looking up to an object, the angle of elevation is formed by an observer's line of sight and a horizontal line. So right here, this little guy right here is looking up to the top of the lighthouse and that line, that angle that is formed, is the angle of elevation. And notice it's still a right triangle right here. Now we're going to do some examples for each, the angle of elevation and the angle of depression. First, we're only working on angle of elevation. Remember that. You're going to draw and label a diagram. This is super helpful in anything geometry. And then you're going to solve for the missing part. And I want you to round to the nearest tenth here. I'll always let you know if we're rounding to the nearest tenth, hundredth, nearest whole number, whatever it is that we're working with, you'll be sure to get information on that. <clears throat> now, Casey cites the top of an 84 foot tall lighthouse at an angle of elevation of 58 degrees. If Casey is six feet tall, how far is he standing from the base of the lighthouse? So we're essentially using the picture up there, and I'm going to draw it again just because, you know, I want to get good practice in. So I am going to draw a little guy right here. Woohoo! And he is, Casey, is six feet tall. Now he's looking up at the top of a lighthouse, and it doesn't have to be extravagant. In fact, you can just draw a box like I just did. Or maybe not, since I'm struggling with it. There we go. So there's a the top of the lighthouse, and this is at 84 feet. Now, they are asking for how far he is standing from the base of the lighthouse, this right here. Or make our right triangle, and we know that this angle of elevation is 58 degrees. So if you then need to redraw your triangle out here, your right triangle, you'll see that this is X, this is 58 degrees, and this leg right here is going to be whatever 84 right here minus 6 is. So the entire length of the lighthouse minus the height of Casey. So 84 minus 6 gets you 78. Notice that for the angle that we are with, we are working with the opposite and the adjacent. So let's set it up. We're going to get tangent of 58. This is Sakatoa. And so you get opposite over adjacent. When it's set up like this, remember I like to cross multiply. and put this over one. So we get X times tangent of 58 is equal to 78. Divide both sides by the tangent of 58, since that's just a number. It's kind of like saying pi or the square root of two, but we don't want to write all of those junky numbers together, like 2.712, whatever, whatever, or 3.141517. We don't want to write all that. So we write something shorter and simpler in most exact terms. So this one's going to one out. And you get that x is going to be 78 over the tangent of 58. If you've got your graphing calculator, please be sure to use it and make sure that you are in degree mode. If you do not have that graphing calculator, well, you can definitely just use the calculator on Google. Notice that I have mine in degree right here. And if I, this is radian, this is degree. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type it in. And I'm going to do 78 divided by, and I put parentheses around my tangent of 58. Oops. And I get about 48.7.
repeat. Now notice if you had it in radians, you would get something like 9.36. So it does make a difference if you're in radians or degrees. So always make sure that you are in degrees so that you can get the correct answer. All right, now let's try the next one. Leah's mom is standing at the bottom of the slide. And she's at the playground waiting for Leah to slide down. So if the angle of elevation from the bottom of the slide to the top is 46 degrees and the slide has a vertical height of 9, find the length of the slide. So right here, what we're going to go ahead and do is that we're going to draw our picture. And we've got the slide here. And here, we'll put Leah up there. Woohoo! And Leah's mom is down here. So her angle of elevation is 46 degrees. The slide right here has a vertical height of 9 feet. And we want to find the length of the slide. So in this case, I'm not going to redraw my triangle just because I've done such an adorable job with the girls. But you'll notice that I'm working with my opposite over my hypotenuse. So I'm going to set it up as sine of 46 is equal to 9 over x. We have the same situation as last time, so we're going to have to cross multiply in this one. And we get x times the sine of 46 is equal to 9. We're going to divide both by sine of 46. And so this one's out, and you get x is 9 divided by the sine of 46 degrees. So let's drop it in our calculator. Clear, clear. Make sure you're in degrees. Luckily, I am. And I'm going to do 9 divided by, and again, if you're not on your TI-84, you're using your Apple, Android, whatever you're using, you can do X divided by parentheses, sign, put in the degree, and you don't have to close the parentheses in this case, and it'll still give you the answer, but, all right, so you get about 12.5 feet. All right, now we're going to move on to the angle of depression. Now, the angle of depression right here is when you're looking down to an object. It is formed by an observer's line of sight and a horizontal line, kind of like what we had last time. Now, here's something special that we need to note, though. The angle of depression is congruent to the angle of elevation. And that's because they are alternate interior angles. The angle of depression and the angle of elevation, those are both horizontal lines being formed. So that means the angle of depression and then the angle of elevation here. So that swimmer is looking up at the same angle that the lifeguard is looking down at it or at him or her. So I'm going to label this as the angle of elevation. You'll notice for this example, I'm asking you to round to the nearest tenth, and actually for both of them. All right, so let's go ahead and read through. A pilot in a helicopter spots a landing pad below. If the angle of depression is 73 degrees... and the horizontal distance to the pad is 1,200 feet, what is the altitude of the helicopter? So I'm going to draw my, it doesn't have to be special, but, you know, I'm going to draw my very, very jankety helicopter. Ah, 
Uh, it looks more like a plane now, but it's okay. So, I know that the landing pad is below it. It's somewhere below, and it sees it. So, here's my landing pad. The angle of depression, it's looking down at it at 73 degrees. And the horizontal distance to this pad is 1,200 feet. And it's asking for the altitude of the helicopter, meaning right here, how high up in the air it is. Or you could also use the angle of elevation and it would still do the same exact thing. So I'm going to go ahead and use this triangle right here where it's 1200 X and 70. And then you've got a 73 angle right here. And you'll notice that I'm having to use tangent and it's going to be tangent of 73 is equal to X over 1200. This one works out and we can do 1200 times the tangent of 73 and that's going to equal X. So move on to our calculator, make sure it's in degrees mode and type it in. And we get 300 and 3,000, I'm sorry, 925.0 feet is approximately how far that distance is. All right, we've got one last one, and that's building A is 480 feet tall, building B is 654 feet tall. The angle of depression from the top of building B is 42 degrees. How far apart are the, are the buildings? So, I've got angle A here, I'm sorry, building A. This is 480 feet. I've got building B. And this is 654 feet. When you were looking down from angle B, if I'm at the top of angle, uh, building B, I'm sorry, it's going to be 42 degrees. And we are looking for this length right here. So I want you to remember that your angle of depression is congruent to your angle of elevation since they're alternate interior angles. And so this is also 42 degrees. You can figure out that this length is going to be 174 because it's 654 minus 480. So we're going to work with this triangle right here <coughs> we're looking for x so that means we're going to have to use tangent because we've got our opposite over our adjacent so we're going to do the tangent of 42 is equal to 174 over x cross multiply and you get x times the tangent of 42 is equal to 174. Divide both sides by tangent of 42. This one's out. And so x is 174 over the tangent of 42. Put it in our calculator. So we're gonna do 174 divided by parentheses tangent of 42 and we get about 193.2 feet. And that's it. So this is how sine, cosine, and tangent are used in the real world. And a lot of those things are used, for example, with like the Tower of Pisa, they've used these types of angle measures to kind of help lessen that angle that it's leaning at. All right, thanks for watching.